going on everybody so as you can see here in the back of the corner oops, that was a <laughs> block of wood okay so i got my wood stove down here I got a little fan there and another fan over here so uh i was looking around i was thinking about getting one of those little self-propelled blade things for 80 bucks or something there to blow the heat off the wood stove and then or on the back of this wood stove we have a little hole here where you can hook a blower motor up to, which then pushes the air up and out of that channel on the back side of the stove. So, uh, I was thinking, of, but those air run about 150 to $200. Or I was thinking the little fan that sits on top, they run 70 to $150, depending on what style you get. I figure with this little fan here, that's about a six inch fan, I thought of an idea. So over here at the workbench, got the, it's like a five and a half inch fan, a little plug, USB plug. It's got a steel blade on it. There's not a lot of plastic on this uh, particular fan. There's a little bit of plastic on the back that holds cases the motor and stuff, but the rest is a steel frame. So. I got thinking and I was like, well, how can I get the heat to blow off the stove faster? Now, mind you, I don't know if I'd use this in a house or close proximity to a wall where you're going to leave your stove unattended. I'm going to make this so it kind of, I'm able to detach it every time if there's still a fire going and I leave the garage or something like that. So, picked up the dryer vent and it's a six inch tube, right? So, I'm thinking I will put this fan in the back of here, kind of use this somehow, so it all kind of locks together. See how that fan kind of sits there? I'll make some kind of uh, little piece there to hold it in place so it doesn't fall anywhere. I'm going to strip the end off of this, get rid of that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip a couple spots around there, fold the steel over, then I can attach it to the back of the stove. So this pipe will be attached to the back of the stove. I might cut it down a little bit or might even leave it that length depending on how long it is to my wall. But this is the idea. We're going to put the fan in here, cut this off, attach it to the back of the stove. I might go and... Uh, make the hole bigger on the back of the stove depending on how I feel and if it's going to work or not. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to peel this off, we're going to put this in there and throw it on the back of the stove. We're going to make our own makeshift blower motor. Fan was 10 to 20 dollars. This piece here was 10 bucks plus your taxes. So I mean I'm in 20 bucks versus a hundred dollars for one of those little self-propelled stove fans or 150 to 200 dollars for the blower motor that goes on the back of the stove now i'm assuming this is probably not going to push the same kind of cfm for like equivalent to the blower motor but for what i need it for i think it's going to do the trick and it's going to do it quite well we're in a what 25 by 30 garage ish give or take a couple feet so it's probably going to heat up in here pretty good pretty quick. So let's get to it. All right, so I guess first things first, we're going to try and get this piece off. Ah, there we go. Anybody need dryer vent? Might be able to use that something else. So we got this here. No. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole in the back of the wood stove and so we can secure it and then we'll, we'll trim this back a little bit so we can fold over some ears, make it flat and put it against the wood stove. Can you be my cameraman? Hey. Follow me around like a puppy dog. <laughs> Side. 
So probably going to cut this down some right here, but we'll get uh, this traced up first, I guess. So, uh, gonna need something a little bit better than that. Might work. Might be able to scratch it with a screwdriver. Doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but we'll get her close, I guess. I'm going to stop moving. Well, we do have a circle there. Take my chalk and I'll just make a better line. There. We got a little circle. So how are we gonna cut that now? You want some earmuffs there, bud? Sure, bud. Thank you. Safety glasses. So, we got our hole here. Now, have a look at this hole. It's not perfect. It <laughs> doesn't quite necessarily need to be for what I want. I want that pipe to bolt, be able to bolt on the outside. So I don't want to go too, too big. And, I mean, if you could get it more round and less sharp, sharp edges, probably be easier or better. I'm not uh, overly concerned if it's oval or perfectly circle, just as long as it's a lot bigger than what I had, so I can actually put the pipe there. Okay, so let's figure out what we're going to do with that pipe. Okay, so we're going to take the measuring tape. We got an inch. We'll go an inch, so we'll do an inch fold. So we'll just kind of go like this all the way around. I was thinking I might be able to kind of slide the marker with the measuring tape, but uh, I don't think it's going to work for my for how I want it to work. I was hoping to just kind of slide it like this and hold the marker, but I think things would just fall out of my hand, so we're going to go around like this. And then we'll play connect the dots here in a, in a minute once we get all the way around. <clears throat> closer you can kind of have this when you do your cuts and your folds uh, the straighter it's going to be on the stove okay so
Perfect. So we got our line. Now, I think what I'm going to do is maybe every, let's say, inch and a half, we're going to do a cut. So that'll fold down. Okay, so I'm going to go around and mark all the inch and a half all the way around. Fast as close as I possible there, I guess. Doesn't have to be. Uh, we're not building a big spaceship. Just building a contraption to blow some heat in a hurry. So as long as they're relatively close, thinking an inch and a half should do. I'm hoping it will. If uh, the diameter of the pipe, if it uh, starts to flex inwards too much, we might have to uh, trim these in two. We'll find out here. Thinking we'll probably be okay. Alright. That together. Get some tin snips. I'm gonna put my gloves back on so I don't get cut. There, so we got got her trimmed all the way around. Close these up so no nobody gets hurt, like myself. Move that fan off to the side for a sec. And grab some pliers. We're just gonna take these and we're gonna try and bend it just right on the line. So, maybe take the pliers and go like this. Kind of like that. So cutting those slits allows you to still keep the pipe relatively round and being able to get pieces you can use with to mount them to the back of the stove. There. Now this should go in the back of the stove, something like that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this down some because it's, I don't want it too, too close to the wall because we got, like, that's the wall there. So I want to trim this down a little bit so it doesn't stick as close to the wall. That way, in case any heat comes out this way, it's not heating up the wall in one little spot. All right. So, let's take measuring tape here. Uh, that's 11 inches right now. So, let's take off, let's say, 3 inches. I'm thinking we'll take off three inches. There. Get that trimmed down. You gotta be careful of those pieces there because they're sharp. Get our snips again.
I might, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave like a piece on this pipe where the fan can sit. Or I might leave a couple little pieces. So yeah, so let's say I put the, the fan in this way. I can leave that so the fan can sit there. Then also, uh, yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. I wanna build a little ledge here. So let's say we'll go about an inch, roughly. So we'll draw another line. This is what we're gonna trim instead. We're gonna trim this. Then we're gonna fold this piece up, leave that piece like the way it is. See how we got that extra little line there? I'm going to cut some more little slits. And I'm going to leave one big one, kind of, I guess, in the middle of this channel here. Yikes! That's sharp. right on this. So we'll get this gone. Or something. No, that section is too big. I'm going to have to cut another slice in it. There. gonna be our fan holder I guess. I think that's all I need and then I can just get rid of that. quite sharp same thing with here so I mean if you wanted to you probably could roll the edges over but I'm going to be extra cautious when I'm playing with this so let's see how this is going to go let's readjust this here This might work, Jeffrey. What do you think? Yes, sir. Not perfect, but I'm thinking it's gonna work. It's gonna blow the heat. Okay, let's clean her fan off because she's dirty, dirty. Fan 
and blades are a lot cleaner now. We can't find some self tappers. Feel the heat. I can feel the air. air up. Feel the air coming out of here already. It's not a a lot, a lot, but I mean it's moving air. That's what I want. Before I had it up here on the wall, and now we got it attached to the back of the stove here. We'll monitor this to see how things go, but. I think this is going to work pretty good. Here, unplug this, re relocate this wire so it's not rubbing against the sharper steel, I guess. There. Yeah, let's move in some air. Perfect. You want it. All right. We're going to get a fire going here. We're going to see how things go. Unplug this for now. And then I can disconnect the fan anytime I want. So it does not heat up the wall. Heat up the fan. And it is winter time here in Canada. It's a rather nice day today. So she's not too, too cold in here to be doing this stuff. So if you are planning on doing something like this for your garage, do it on a nicer day where you're not freezing your fingertips. Alright, so we'll check back in with you in an hour, 20 minutes, you in like two seconds. See you guys in a second. Now, we have our fan all hooked up here, as you can see down below. It's actually throwing some heat, which is nice. You can get a little bit of a breeze coming off the stove. But I wanted just to point out, if you have any fire regulations for insurance and stuff like that, or codes that you need to follow for fireplace scenarios uh, follow them this is I'm not telling you to go out and do this it's an idea it's up to you what you want to do I'm not held responsible so you're gonna be taking a taking liability for your own actions follow the codes for your fireplace or wood stove or wood burning uh, scenario and you should be fine but if uh, uh, I'm not going to be leaving this fire ever unattended, uh, the fan will always be disconnected and I'm going to build a little piece there that's on the back of the stove where it kind of stops the heat from coming to the wall after the fact. <clears throat> so play it safe, do it right. But here's an idea, if you're in a scenario don't burn your place down. Don't leave it unintended. Play with caution. And she's working pretty good so far. Happy with what I just built. Okay, if you guys haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe and we'll see you guys all in the next video.